Oakley Landfill, Portsmouth City Council. <clears throat> the Esquire um, has grabbed the floor, and, and I do want comments on that. Go ahead, Esquire. Certainly. Uh, on uh, your December 11th meeting, the board asked me for some uh, input, which I have given you uh, in the form of uh, confidential legal advice as to what steps could be taken in connection with uh, several disturbing developments that have occurred in connection with the uh, Coakley landfill. Uh, one of those disturbing developments has to do with the uh, lack of response by EPA and DES to uh, the uh, threat of to that we have experienced to our wells that Aquarian has that supplies wa us water with and which have uh, only this year found significant levels of PFCs. Uh, we have addressed that in part by engaging we and Northampton, the services of uh, Professor Tom Ballestero, who has uh, given some significant comments at their request to EPA and DES, explaining how it is that the Coakley landfill uh, does provide, because of the way it was utilized, a pathway for north and south migration of PFCs. His recommendation was that there be installed a number of couplet wells uh, to the south and southeast to detect whether or not PFCs, uh, which have been found at the Coakley landfill, are in fact migrating to the south and the southeast. Um, so far, it appears that EPA is not terribly uh, 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 proactive in that regard. And I think uh, it behooves any party that has a potential threat like that to put keep pressure on EPA and DES. Another problem has to do with the fact that uh, not only is there a, a slowness in terms of installing monitoring wells to the south and southeast, but in fact uh, the Coakley Landfill Group has hired a lobbyist, uh, in fact, to, uh, who has indicated to Representative Bidney Mesmer that they oppose, their, that this lobbyist is going to oppose efforts on her part uh, to uh, uh, get properly gauge what is the, the level of PFCs that is acceptable in, wa in drinking water, and moreover oppo to oppose legislation that would make the Coakley Landfill Group, which has a significant municipal membership, um, subject to the right to know law. So far, the Coakley Landfill Group has shown itself only when it feels it's, it's, it, to its interest. Uh, we, we had a presentation here by the Coakley Landfill Group, which was great, but uh, for the most part, they do their business behind closed doors. Um, and in response to this threat of a lobbyist to, to oppose legislation uh, aimed at the, uh, dealing with cancer uh, issues, um, the, uh, there was a presentation last week, last Monday, last uh, Tuesday, at the uh, Portsmouth City Council meeting by Representative Mesmer and also by Selectman Bean, uh, explaining uh, why there is a problem with the, with uh, hiring this lobbyist on the part of the Portsmouth City Council, and I believe it's important for this board to 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 have its voice heard in that same vein. And thus, I have prepared a letter uh, for the board's consideration uh, to voice our concerns. Uh, much of the city council in Portsmouth has new members. Uh, three of their former members have uh, retired. Uh, they have new members who do seem to be receptive to these concerns. A number of citizens, uh, besides the two I mentioned, did, did speak at that meeting uh, very eloquently as to why Portsmouth uh, should uh, act against uh, public health by providing 53 percent of the funding for a Coakley landfill group that's opposing uh, uh, public health, important public health measures. And so as a first step to what this board could do, I, I'm suggesting uh, that this letter be uh, sent to the Portsmouth City Council and signed by members of the board. I'd like to uh, jump in on this, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, I request that it be put on the... Uh agenda. Uh, this was the meeting that I attended when you folks were down, some of you were down at, down at the beach with the governor, and uh, there, were, there was eloquent, eloquent testimony, uh, mostly from women, uh, that were uh, 
concerned, uh, number one, about the threat, uh, the carcinogens, but the fact that Portsmouth had a lobbyist and was lobbying against their own legislators in their own legislative efforts and their own ability to provide safe water, and in our case, safe and enough water. My comments to the, the council was that we in Hampton, both as a representative and a selectman, uh, were, t were tired of the obfuscation. We were tired of the obstruction. We were tired of these challenges that we face here in Hampton. And that uh, the conflict of interest uh, in, in all of those aforementioned phenomena, we're past that. And we're done dealing with the master of the universe and water and the solution that has failed for 30 years Mr. Sullivan, the city attorney in Portsmouth and the CEO of the CLG. And the same transpires up to uh, Concord, where we went last Friday with the commission, of which I'm a member. The CLG was not there. They sent the lobbyist. Mr. McMahon, or Chairman McMahon, requested the, the lobbyist um, to answer some questions, if he could, and he refused to do so. And the CLG wasn't there. We have children dying. We have a cancer cluster, one of 300 in the country. Uh, DES came in at the very tail end of the meeting. They were not there. Health and Human Services uh, was not there. The EPA sent uh, a civil affairs, a public affairs, Jim Murphy. And all, all of these men are honorable, and, and all of these, these state platforms are, are, uh, are hardworking, honorable people. Uh, but I was there. And I was in Portsmouth, and I wasn't getting supper, and I was being criticized, and uh, I was driving my hour and spending my time away from my job, and that's what I signed up to do and, pr and privileged to do it. But uh, is I made comment, specific comment, that the science wasn't there, uh, the, the energy wasn't there, and that uh, it seems to be doing a backslide. And here we sit tonight in the town of Hampton. Uh, Portsmouth isn't aggrieved. They have plenty of water. Their water's safe. We've talked about this ad nauseum. And uh, I made comment additionally that we have Mr. Ballestero and that we have perhaps infrastructure uh, challenges that uh, Eversource can bring forth to mitigate this carcinogenic threat to our water supply that does not include uh, mixing a cancer cocktail and diluting uh, water uh, so the, the level lowers, uh, which to me is is anachronistic and prehistoric and, and un unacceptable. So that's where we're at. It's not moving forward. Uh, and while I don't speak for the board, and my comments uh, indicated such in Portsmouth, and I don't speak for the commission, but I am a representative, it's time that Portsmouth started uh, accepting the responsibility, Mr. Chairman and board members, uh, for cost, to share in the cost of these, these uh, testing to share in the cost of the remediation. And they've always dodged that. They took the attenuation route. Is that correct, Councillor? 30 correct. years ago. They put a Band-Aid on a melanoma. And now we're dealing with it. And we're the ones with the shutdown well. We're the ones that can't meet demand, potentially. And here we sit. And nothing's changed. And it was a year ago. And now is the time to even reinforce this letter. Uh, I have read it. Uh, I do not believe that it asks for uh, indemnification on any part, does it? It does not. It does not. Why are we paying for Dr. Ballestero when they cannot disprove that they are responsible for these costs? Why are we going to pay higher infrastructure and uh, higher uh, capital investment costs as water consumers when Portsmouth isn't? And it's going to come on our rate for our wells. Why are we incurring these costs? Why are we spending our time? And they don't. And you saw what happened with the MBTE uh, allocation or disbursements most recently. And Portsmouth was right there. And they were, they were getting money to hook up people who they had impacted their wells. They were getting Blampery River up in Madbury. And they were hooking themselves up. So I think we need to be more aggressive. Uh, I think that Portsmouth needs to start paying some money. I think the time to um, talk with Mr. Sullivan is over. Uh, he doesn't speak. This is the city of Portsmouth. And this, this, this dishing off by Portsmouth over the last 30 years for people that don't attend meetings, that hire lobbyists, and leave us here alone. And I know, Mr. Chairman, uh, the quality of your leadership. And if the town of Hampton was polluting someone's water or we couldn't disprove it and they had a water shortage, I know you'd be on the phone to them. 
And now you, I know you'd have the town manager on the phone to them. And I know this board would support that. And we don't hear anything from Boston. We've never had a counselor come in here or pick up the phone and say, hey, Fred, what the heck's going on? You're almost out, you know, you're running a tight margin. Fred, you've got well shut down. Nothing. Zip. Zero. And they're our neighbors. And I know, I know the standard are different here in, in, in Hampton is different. And if there was something that we did, that we would be on the phone to them. And if there was a, a well or a pollution problem that we caused, we'd be looking for a much more aggressive remediation of that. Mr. McMahon, importantly, Chairman McMahon has called for the complete remediation and has the support with Minnie Messner and her great efforts to eradicate this problem and stop the testing, testing fish, is to make the problem go away. So I think this letter um, is great. I think it needs to allude that um, we shouldn't be paying for Dr. Ballesteros. Northampton should be, and Portsmouth should be, and we should be in reimbursed for it. Further, the Commission wants to hear from Dr. Ballesteros, and we should have Dr. Ballesteros provide science to the Commission because there were no scientists there. And I made that point. We've got a, a, a public affairs gentleman from the EPA, and there wasn't one scientist in the room to testify. Not one. You got an insurance guy and a bunch of other people, Messmer's a hydrologist, but with no expertise, no science in the room. And this, according to Attorney Sullivan, is going to go on and on. And we'll all die before um, it, it's resolved. So uh, if Mark would uh, incorporate some of those remarks I just had, I think the letter needs to be more aggressive. I think we need to be indemnified. And I think they, the City Council, not Mr. Sullivan, the City Council has to have membership up there, and they have to accept responsibility. The town of Northampton has to have membership in, in participation in these agreements. Because this, this Mr. Sullivan thing that we've all called out on a conflict of interest, obstruction, lack of transparency, conflict of interest, and now hiring a lobbyist, and not even showing up for the meeting, when we, we could run out of water, um, is a standard that this board uh, can no longer tolerate. And I would, I would invite the uh, um, counselor to uh, recommend a way forward. We did have a unanimous uh, consent several meetings ago that you were to pursue various courses of action. This is one, but I definitely think that it should be expanded. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So what do you need? Uh, I've given the board this letter as a yep. draft, and I'm open to the board's suggestions about whether you wish this letter to go out or you wish it to be modified. It's a board decision at this point. Okay, so do you need people to discuss that with you right now, or what? what? It can be done in a non-public session. Okay. so it's Probably best in that. Okay, way. good. So you don't need anything from us right now? You don't need a motion? You don't need anything right now? Uh, if the board wishes to discuss this in non-public, that's perfectly appropriate. I would prefer we're going. It. we're going after this meeting, right? Correct. Right, so you don't need anything at this time, though. That's what I'm asking, right now. That can be discussed at that time. Okay, good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.